Developing Your Coaching Philosophy. Coaching is a challenging profession. A well-developed philosophy will help you make difficult decisions and coach more successfully. It is imperative that you share your coaching philosophy with your staff, your athletes, and at some levels, the parents of your athletes. By doing this, it will help remove uncertainty about training rules, style of play, discipline, codes of conduct, competitive outlook, and many other aspects you may deal with as a coach. Keep in mind, as a coach, you will never make everyone happy. However, having a sound coaching philosophy will help you from second-guessing yourself. Here's a little story to help put it in perspective. There was an old man, a boy, and a donkey. They were going to town and it was decided that the boy should ride. As they went along, they passed some people who exclaimed that it was a shame for the boy to ride and the old man to walk. The man and the boy decided that maybe the critics were right, so they changed positions. Later, they passed some more people who then explained that it was a real shame for the man to make such a small boy walk. The two decided that maybe they sh both should walk. Soon they passed some more people who explained that it was stupid to walk when they had a donkey to ride. The man and the boy decided maybe the critics were right, so they decided that they both should ride. They soon passed other people who explained that it was a shame to put such a load on a poor little animal. The old man and the boy decided that maybe their critics were right, so they decided to carry the donkey. As they crossed a bridge, they lost their grip on the animal and the donkey fell into the river and drowned. The moral of the story is that if you try to please everyone, you will finally lose your ass. When developing your philosophy, remember that philosophies are lifelong in their development. Over time, your philosophy may need to be reevaluated depending upon the position you hold and the experiences you have had. For example, you start off with a coaching philosophy that contains certain beliefs and principles you feel strongly about. Throughout the season, a situation arises that you must deal with. You may have an you may have an athlete disrespect you in front of the rest of the team. How you respond should reflect those beliefs and principles in your philosophy. Based on the severity of the situation, you may choose to suspend the athlete or remove him or her from your team. From there, you can experience the consequences of your actions. It may improve the morale of your team or it may disrupt your team chemistry. Either way, that experience can cause you to change, adjust, or solidify your beliefs and principles. In order to develop your own coaching, coaching philosophy, it must contain two main concepts. The first one are major objectives. These are the things that you value and you want to achieve. The second thing is personal beliefs and principles. These will help you achieve your objectives. When you have clarity about who you are and what you want, decisions and what actions to take become clear and are consistent. So like I said before, having a clear philosophy can help you make the hard decisions when they arise. Your developing principles are tested when you find yourself or your team in situations in which you are uncertain how to respond. For example, your star player is hurt. If you win, you go to the title game. However, if you play him or her, they could get hurt worse and potentially lose their scholarship next year at college. So what do you do? Most people, I would hope, would say that they would put the athlete before their own game. Favorable evaluations strengthen your principles. So going back to the example, the player's parents could thank you for not playing him or her. Unfavorable evaluations, especially repeated ones, may indicate that you need to reassess your current principles. For example, if you were to lose the game and have multiple parents, administrators, and community leaders question you as to why you didn't play your star player. Part of building a coaching philosophy is deciding what level of self-disclosure is appropriate. How much of yourself are you willing to share? The amount of disclosure will greatly depend on the age or division you are coaching. Some coaches believe that it is inappropriate to disclose themselves to their athletes. 
However, disclosing things about yourself does not mean you have to reveal intimate details about your life. Some things you could disclose would be where you grew up, sports you played, or who your favorite athletes are. If you are unwilling to open up, you can can you really expect your athletes to share their thoughts or feelings with you? They probably won't because they may feel like they don't know you well enough to do so. The most important part of a philosophy is that you own it. Taking on someone else's philosophy as your own will fail you in the end. You want it to represent your own personal beliefs and principles, not someone else's. Keep in mind that a philosophy is not really expressed by what you say, but by what your actions are. So if you are not ready to use it to guide you as a coach, then you need to revise it. The next three slides are some coaching philosophy examples. You can read through them on your own. Just a few reminders, all original forum posts are due Thursday by 11.55 p.m. and should be between 400 to 600 words. Be sure to use proper grammar and answer all the questions for each forum. Your two response posts are due Sunday by 11.55 p.m. Each response post should be between 200 and 400 words. Once again, be sure to use proper grammar. For the response posts, it is okay to disagree with your fellow students. This may be the case with future forums. However, if you respond to someone that you have a different view then, please be respectful of them and do not make it a personal attack. Due to the size of this class, I will try to respond to two to three posts each forum. As always, if you have any questions, please ask. 